Hello, wonderful pearls. Uh, my name is Pearl and Ray Volusio. I'm a media and entertainment personality, and you are listening to the very first episode of the Collection of Pearls podcast. Yay! I figured that it was about time that I started up a vocal diary entry kind of thing here via podcasting this year. Since it's almost the end of January, it's uh, Tuesday, January 25, specifically, almost Australia Day. Um, in like, I don't know, two, two, three, three quarters of a day, and it'll be Australia Day. We've uh, endeavored to keep the 2022 resolution goals quite simple this year. Um, specifically, I'm getting into fitness that I lost during the last couple of years, thanks to the pandemic. Um, we're getting that back, and then we're going to try and surpass that. Finally, improve on my Korean fluency, because that's stagnated the last couple of years, too. And just in general, push for some career progress that I can be happy with. Um, today's podcast episode, episode one, is, yeah, going to be literally just me rambling on as if it's a diary entry. Hope you don't mind. Um, just enjoy it don't enjoy it leave a comment you know about how weird it is maybe i mean let's be real there are way worse things you could be listening to right anyway so far we have made good progress for the first few weeks of the year so i'm hoping fingers crossed that we maintain that momentum throughout the rest of the year i mean i am not a morning person by any means like I I'm a night owl you know that in that category of person that just stays up late instead of wakes up early yeah I've been forcing myself to uh, to wake up at 5 a.m just to get to the gym before peak hour before everyone else gets there and and start my day I've been going to sleep relatively early for myself what I consider to be early which is before 11 p.m now that's that's a thing oh and like honestly I think the reason why I've gotten into shifting myself to not necessarily forcing myself to be a morning person but really trying to make an effort to get my health back first thing in the morning, every morning, or the majority of mornings, I should say, is because my mental health really took a dive during the last 24 months. And I'm sure the majority of people have experienced similar thanks to the wonderful pandemic of COVID. And so I'm, you know, I'm adamant to get myself back on track. 2022, you know, let's go. Um, one of my favorite numbers is the number two, so as corny as it is, I'm I'm hoping that this minor bit of numerical superstition, you know, fingers crossed, that pulls me through for the year. And um you know, we're just we're just trying to make progress this year. I, I've been really focused on applying for more castings than I had been and the previous or the last two, three years. And I'm really focusing or focused on progressing more than I had, um, at least for last year. Um, the last two years, thanks pandemic, you know, salute. Um, and honestly, I really did take the whole quote unquote, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so all you need to do is survive to heart last year. I, I took that step back and, and just, if I needed to, to sleep all day I slept all day and had to just fight my guilt over just sleeping because if the depressive phase says I need sleep I'm gonna listen to the depressive phase so I I a lot of last year was just trying to get a little bit at a time of my business degree done getting a whole lot of sleep done and then planning I guess for for the next few years ahead 
that kind of thing, right? This year, you know, it's almost the end of January. This year, I'm really trying to push, I'm really, goodness, I'm really trying to push myself towards my happiness, my mental health, and physical health-wise, as well as career-wise, you know, just, you know, we're not striving for much. We just want to make progress, right? I, the part of me that wants to be productive just continually wants to, even if they're just baby steps, you know, take those baby steps, make progress. I think for me, the year 2022, I don't know, it's the year of making progress, some semblance of progress, right? Um, And that also includes well, I mentioned castings before and like applying for more castings. Hang on, let me adjust in my chair because my left foot is numb now. Um, I found, I found um, that with castings and stuff, with the, with the pandemic, I haven't been able to go to physical auditions and cast. I'm, I'm sure that the rest of the entertainment industry will, you know, relate to that. We can't show our in-person personality. We can't charm the audition panel, right? (laughs) Um, We can only show so much in self-tapes that we send over and whatnot. And it... It's such a different feel and atmosphere to in-person auditions. But you know what? It means that I really delved into looking at casting calls and auditions for vocal work, for voice work. And I, uh, yeah, that's part of my to-do list too. Um, Which brings me to a point that, you know, just speaking off the dome, right? Um, I found that as a vocalist, you know, I don't know when this happened, but I think for me it happened um, in my early 20s or specifically 2010. So I was literally 20. <laughs> um, with that, with being a singer or vocalist for the Happy Hardcore scene here in Australia, with the label Australia with Force, I was able to get used to listening to and hearing my own voice quite quickly. Um, You get used to um, kind of stepping out of yourself and um, being analytical and critical from a third party perspective, not really taking um, how much your voice sounds weird to your own ears um, too personally, right? You can can really... um, hone your skills and improve as a vocalist if you get used to it (laughs) because I honestly like ever since I was younger you know you hear people say the whole you know the whole thing about um oh god listening to myself back on recordings like it doesn't sound like me they like but technically that's what you really sound like. We have a warped sense, like humans just have a warped sense of what we sound like because we're listening to ourselves through the, this filter, the appropriate word, through the filter of our own skull. And that's altering um, what we genuinely sound like. So, you know, being able to listen to my real recorded voice. I mean, even with this, right? Um, you get used to the sound of your bo- your voice and whatnot. And thankfully, I've been able to do that. I mean, it is part of my profession. On the other hand, I found that getting used to how I looked like in non-mirrored selfies and video took a little longer than, you know, I, I- I'd care to admit. Um... I take selfies for Instagram and everything, and I would just not necessarily freak out, but I would be really weirded out by how I look non-mirrored. But realistically, that's what everyone else is seeing, the mirrored version of you that we're used to 
looking at ourselves, that's actually the weird, um, the weird you, right? Like, yeah, I just find that fascinating. And so the more, <laughs> I guess that, you know, leads into the whole, the more symmetrical you are, the less noticeable it is, but you're kind of screwed if you have like, non-symmetrical beauty marks or um, a scar um, that's kind of kind of non-visible depending on my makeup and the lighting but anyway yeah like that's a thing so I had promised myself at the start of last year that one of my minor girls girls <laughs> minor goals for 2021 was to get used to my non-mirrored face. I was applying for more castings, for more on-screen work, and I really just wanted to get used to the, like, I'm gonna be, you know, just confiding in y'all for, for a hot minute. I'm getting used to the fact that the left side of my face, to me, looks huge in comparison to the right side of my face. I I just, like, mirrored, I don't notice it. But non-mirrored, like how everyone else sees it, it's huge, including my left eye. My left eye, to me, looks like it's bulging out of my sky. I'm exaggerating for, you know, for wanting to make emphasis but really like the first time the first few times I took selfies and then had them like turned off the mirrored se um setting in the app oh it was so weird um but yeah you know okay thankfully after a few months I found that you know I had mentally adjusted but just getting around that I will admit it it was a challenge and obviously this is like in the grand scheme of things of what people are going through in the world with we have a pandemic a global pandemic on our hands you know as one of the major bad things that's happening i mean there are obviously worse things people are going through but I thought I'd share, you know, um, that I had, I had promised myself that that was a minor goal last year. And I, I guess I just wanted to share in my little diary entry, my vocal diary entry, that um, I have, for the most part, yeah, for the most part, successfully mentally adjusted to myself non-mirrored so how other people see it because like if we're going to be you know perfectly honest not being and, and this is for other people in the industry who have their photos taken either professionally or by their friends right like and then you never feel satisfied it, it <laughs> this endeavor of mine to get used to being neutral of my non-mirrored self improved um, my mental health, my thought process, or like just my energy during photo shoots and video shoots. Because, you know, I was thinking about it and really, it's unfortunate. It creates a subconscious train of thought that, you know, since I wasn't happy with myself in the photos or, like, um, non-mirrored video, that, you know, flowing from that train of thought, you feel unattractive. And then that, you know, seeps into or emits into the photos that are being taken, the video that's being taken. And you can't really... You can't really do your best work or more rather more energy is then put out to to pretend that you're okay with yourself during the photo shoots 
unless of course the the concept of the shoot is to show that vulnerability but the majority of the time it's not you know the majority of the time you're you're posing you're a boss ass bitch, you know that kind of thing but <laughs> so you know I, I found it interesting you know the the psychological aspect of it like just adjusting this one habit of posting mirrored selfies or mirrored photos of myself had the ability to create a mental shift in how I saw myself, right? And and the energy and the perception that you have of yourself, right? The contentness. Because we're not, like, I'm, I'm someone and I'm sure I'll talk, discuss, or rant about this in the future, but I'm really someone that wants more body neutrality and less toxic body posit there I can't speak um less toxic body positivity because I see so much like you have to love your body it's like no why can't I just be satisfied with my body like why can't I just be neutral and okay with my body today I don't have to love like let's be real here I don't have to love myself every single day sometimes I would just like to be okay with my body meh with my body right so anyway um my whole not mirroring my selfies kind of thing um I encourage anyone who might be interested um in seeing how they fare with that you know start flipping your selfies uh, that your photos that you posted on Instagram on you know actually don't mirror yourself on tiktok right that whole thing uh, just on social media photos of yourself that you post make it so the the way that you are being seen is how other people see you and you know get used to that because honestly like for me it worked it might help yourself um with being more content with with how you look like i'm not Honestly, I'm not I'm not saying that, oh my god, you're going to all of a sudden radically love yourself. You're going to be like, yes! Like, at the very least, you will get used to yourself and not feel like a piece of shit during, fo- <laughs> during photos. Like, if, if this is something, or like how you look in photos or video is something that you know kind of brings you down one of the many or few things that you know you you gripe with you grapple with in life maybe you know shifting shifting your selfies to being non-mirrored maybe that will help you know just putting that out there I have no idea, you know, I have no idea how long this first episode is going to be, but I'm going to assume uh, not very long, maybe, I don't know. Um, having said that, um, I did want to share that in my efforts to hold myself accountable and making fitness progress right before New Year's, okay, I don't care if you call what I'm about to say a waste of money, I did it for me. Okay, <laughs> hashtag, it's 100% hashtag treat yourself with incentive, okay? I signed up for this thing called the Conqueror, Conqueror Events. And so they're virtual challenges that can help motivate you with your fitness goals. Oh, hashtag not sponsored, okay? <laughs> um, so you, you can track your progress in the app and so, f- okay, so far it's been so fun. I've just completed the Mount Everest challenge which means that I've successfully completed 64.2 kilometers, right? So people, some people, you know, run and jog and walk or cycle outside. For me, I'm very much a gym person, so I use the treadmill and the elliptical at the gym um, to, to clock in my distances and everything. And this is really cute. This part is really, really cute. When you complete the, when you've completed the challenges, you get, you get 
their respective medals sent to you in the mail. So for instance, now that I've completed Mount Everest, I'm going to get the Mount Everest medal sent to me in the mail. And when I tell you when I'm Richie Do, I'm going to have a section of my wall completely dedicated to putting the honeycombs up um, where you store the medals, right? And just displaying them. It's so fun. Um, so yeah, like, look, hashtag again, hashtag not sponsored. But in the future, you know, I'd be down to be sponsored by them, you know, do some live streams literally just on the treadmill or on the elliptical doing some little marathons and stuff with um with our viewers. That would be cool, right? I think it would be cool. And like honest, it's such a cute concept. And I have to say, you technically could cheat as in you technically could pay for the medals like for the challenge each individual challenge um costs and i got everything at a discount prior to new year's because it was like new year's resolution sale <laughs> so so i didn't pay full price so it was great but like you could technically pay for the medals and then put them down put the your code for the challenges in the app fudge the numbers right just to get the medals in the mail, right? You could you you could totally do that technically. But but then you're like cheating yourself, you know? And and personally, I like knowing the fact that I just completed the distance equivalent of Mount Everest, like climbing Mount Everest, right? 64.2 kilometers and then at the end of the year or like just at the end of several medals or even one medal, you get to see the massive amount of distance that you've crossed it's it's cool it's cute it's cool insert appropriate descriptive words here um i just i've just been having a lot of fun with it i think that if you're interested um if you're watching this or listening to this on youtube i'm going to put um my my conqueror events link um in the uh in the description box again not sponsored but every person gets like a referral link yeah when they participate yeah i I just i have a legitimate sense of accomplishment whilst i'm working on hitting my fitness goals for the year and in the you know foreseeable future like it, it this definitely helps in the motivation department even though you know technically i didn't need it because i'm a gym junkie anyway and oh man i almost feel like crying like i i was hyped a second ago because i was you know sharing sharing this cool thing that <laughs> this cool thing that i purchased and that i I, I completed and worked on and everything, but I feel like tearing up because I'm finally getting back to the gym, but I know how much my, my own fitness and my strength and my muscle mass, my muscle strength and my endurance, my stamina, you know, all the, all the fitness good stuff. I know how much that stuff has declined because of the pandemic, um, because of lockdowns and everything and and it really sucks because you know you you see um you, you see my mom is a frontliner she's a registered nurse and every, every time she goes for a shift like there's just that sinking feeling in my chest or like in my gut Right, and I, I get paranoid, I get anxious, like really, really anxious um, for her safety. But thankfully, you know, so uh, despite my accent, for those of you who don't know, um, I live in Sydney, Australia. Thankfully, uh, we have access to the vaccine, to the boosters as well. 
um, and they were free. That's good. Um, I am fully vaccinated with Pfizer, also first booster with Pfizer. Um, I was fortunate enough to get um, my my full dosage or two doses of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine relatively early in comparison to a lot of people because my mom is a frontliner. So our whole family is vaccinated, thankfully. And I don't know, like, obviously, there are people out there that are like, you know, let's just live with the virus and everything. But I feel like the more people that get vaccinated, the less death we are going to see. Because, yeah, technically Omicron, right? And even my mother said this as a registered nurse, right? Technically Omicron, not as severe as, say, Delta variant, right? Having said that, I have friends who are immunocompromised, right? have underlying conditions that's different right they can't they can't just oh i'm crying oh god <laughs> they can't just shrug off oh i need i need tissue they can't just shrug off you know the the virus um as like a minor case of the flu you know the it, it, it could severely like, oh, there's a car going by outside they <laughs> They could die, and we. I've had so I had a relative. She, she's quite old. Um, I think it's my father's older sister, my like one of my eldest aunts. Um, in the Philippines, and this this was last year, but it still it still sucks, right? So, she technically initially didn't get covid okay um she was in she had to go to the hospital because i it's either she busted her hip or like her leg or something like that and because she's older she had to go to the hospital and because of all the cases there that's when she contracted covid and passed away so i just (laughs) everyone Please, like, I don't want to get on my damn soapbox or, like, you know, my apple box. I'm 5354, five, like, you know, not that tall, but please, you know, I'm someone who, who's, who wears a mask. Um, I wear, I've been wearing face masks before the pandemic happened, right? Like, it, it, like, wear a mask, wash your hands you know, be hygienic, just be hygienic, right? Be, be, be hygienic. Like that, that's all I ask. <laughs> I, I just, just have some compassion because like, even if you're an individualist instead of a, a collectivist person in society, if you have at least a minute amount of empathy and compassion during the pandemic it actually benefits you right um so yeah oh oh my gosh okay ah so all right i got i got i got to get on a topic that that will uh neutralize the the tears um th- okay 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 I got one in 3 days <laughs> cuz it is it is Tuesday right now and then tomorrow's Wednesday then Thursday then Friday Friday oh I um so I'm looking forward to the new Pokemon Legends Arceus it's coming out on Friday and um I feel like excited is the appropriate word, but also nervous. Like, I'm really excited to start streaming it, to start playing it, um, and going through it. Mm, excuse me. If you just heard that burp, I just finished breakfast with my parents. I'm digesting. Gotta get those calories in after the fasted cardio workout. Like, let's go. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm nervous because the, the last... 
Pokemon game I played was Sword and Shield, and my god, Shield. Um, shout out to my friend who bought it for my birthday when it came out. And I feel like... <laughs> I mean, look, it looks promising. We'll see how it goes. Um, I've been really trying to avoid spoilers on social media. But, you know, social media does what social media do. And, um, but no, no, I, the one, I wouldn't even consider it a spoiler. But one critique that I've heard is that, and obviously, I don't have the game yet. This is just like secondhand, thirdhand information, right? Um, from what I've heard, someone told us, somebody told me, okay, somebody told me that one of the critiques coming out at the moment is that because it is open world, or maybe not because, but the open world of the game feels empty, feels barren, like that kind of thing. I'm like, well, you know, I don't know. I'll personally see it on Friday. But to be perfectly honest, I mean, how densely populated do you want the world to be a, with, with Pokemon? I mean, do you want to take two steps and constantly run into Vatata? Like, what is this? The, the Mount Moon Cave? Every three steps, you run into Zubat. Like, that's a thing, right? Or like, if I'm if I'm running away from an Ursa Ring or a massive Snorlax, do I want to be running into other Pokemon every five steps? Like, there's a balance, and I I, I obviously have no perception yet, or like no um, point of reference for personal experience for myself yet, but just spitballing with the critique that I heard, it's like, you know, we'll we'll see, right? We'll we'll see whether or not people are just exaggerating, oh, it's empty and blah, blah, we'll we'll, we'll see, right? We we love to exaggerate for emphasis, don't we? Humans, fellow humans. Um, Yeah, you know, we'll see how it goes. I, I've been streaming. I've been streaming, I've been streaming. We have been streaming Super Mario Odyssey for the last couple of streams. Couple of streams, yeah, I want to say. And then on Thursday, is I've been trying to keep a consistent stream schedule for the last couple of months. Um, <laughs> um, to pass the time, to keep ourselves occupied, we have been um, collecting extra moon moons on Super Mario Odyssey just because it's cute. I'm getting myself into the Nintendo mindset, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, I, I'm having fun with that. I, I will say, because I have the old Elgato game capture, that the whole it's almost like 1.5 second delay on my obs like mini rant (laughs) i i will move or jump and then the capture will display it delayed but my audio like my mic and my webcam show me instantaneously. So there's this disconnect of my reaction time being 1.5 seconds faster than what's being displayed in the game. I have, I'm not Richie Do yet, okay? So I'm unfortunate, oops, someone, someone's opening the gate outside. I'm unfortunately not Richie Do, so I'm unable to upgrade my setup let alone upgrade my game capture one of my friends says that um the more recent elgato game captures minimize the delay that i'm experiencing so we'll see 
in the future when I'm Richie do when I de like when I deck out update my setup and everything we will you know compare maybe it's night and day maybe you'll catch me on stream going oh my god the difference but until then I I'm going to suffer with the difference it, it's tears before bedtime I just yeah anyway um speaking of twitch speaking of streaming um after next week I will well I say after next week but I've contacted or I've reached out to some artists that I really like the aesthetic of um, especially when they do emotes as well I've reached out to them for their rates um, for commissions for emo commissions because I, I want to get that stuff ready before I complete the affiliate onboarding process and everything and then that way the people who do want to subscribe can can have access to emotes instantly Right? Instead of me completing the onboarding pro process of affiliate, and then there's no Twitch emotes for them yet. Right? It's, like, it's empty. I, I want there to be a consistent and full amount of incentive, you know, that, that can you know, be there already for them. And yeah, so, f you know, fingers crossed that um, not only uh, do these artists get back to me, but I, I do also want to fingers crossed for if um, I, I decide to, when I decide to go with one artist, I can maintain commissioning from that same artist just for, and that's another thing, okay? Um, so <laughs> technically, can I just say, and I'm rambling, technically I reached affiliate, like I hit those benchmarks in, in, in the Twitch, like the little achievement page, right? Those goals. I reached affiliate benchmark and received the email like, you can, you can apply for affiliate, right? I reached that midway last year when, um, when Pokemon Unite came out, right? But I just never got around to actually completing the process. Uh, so, yeah, just that's been there. I, I've reached out to those artists I found on Instagram about the emotes. Again, fingers crossed, toast crossed, and you're praying to the universe. Um, and I, I just want to stick with, or as much as possible, I want to stick with one artist um, for emote aesthetic consistency or at the very least stick to artists that aesthetically have a very or similar art style right like just just because i'm gonna be real with you okay i don't know about you but and this this is so what is what is the is the appropriate word superfluous or just like so asinine or it's so who gives a <laughs> shit, right I, I don't know about you but i get a little tickle at the back of my head when i see different art styles between bunches of emotes when it, with an individual streamer does that make sense so say you're watching your favorite streamer, right? And you go to their available emotes and you can tell like three of these emotes were made by artist A. Five emotes were made by artist B. Four emotes were made by artist C. And it's just, there's an inconsistency. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with commissioning different artists because you know it, it technically means that several artists were able to be supported through commissions but from a consistency like an aesthetics right you know cue audio sparkles right from an aesthetics standpoint it feels less flowy <laughs> god it's such it's such a random thing to be finicky about but and it's not necessarily a hill I'm willing to die on. It's just one of those things. You know, I I like when things are consistent 
aesthetic wise. I, I'm someone who notices um, aesthetic consistency. How many times can I say the word aesthetic? Gee, okay. I'm someone who notices when the personal brand of a media personality or a content creator is inconsistent. It doesn't flow. There's no cohesiveness. And whether that's intentional or not is irrelevant. But I just like when everything's consistent. It's great. It looks like the their color palette that they use, like on brand, like it's just chef's kiss, chef's kiss. Like shout out to those creators that, you know, you've got your personal branding and everything on point or you're working towards it or hey, maybe listening to this, you got that epiphany and now you're going to work on it. Like, you know, shout out to you. Let's go. Let's hustle. You're 2022. Let's get it. Right. Ah. <sighs> I really thought I wasn't going to rant about <laughs> the anything today. And I really thought that today's episode would be like 10 minutes long, but we've hit like the 41 minute mark. This is what happens when I ramble. Oh my God. Um, Yeah. And I cried. I teared up. Okay. I didn't Kim Kardashian ugly cry like my earring fell into the ocean, but, but I, I teared up. Okay. The... The the last few years, the last few years, and obviously I'm sure that there are a lot of people, oh, I swore I wasn't going to cry again. I'm sure there are many, many, many other people that can relate to this, but just existing or trying to survive, you know, in our varied ways that we do. It's been very exhausting. <laughs> the last few years have been very, very, um, you know, exhausting in more ways than one. Very emotionally exhausting. Um, and from an introspective perspective, it, as much as we would rather not have to go through trauma in order to have character development it it's really made me assess myself internally and externally um what I want in life um my friendships what I allocate my HP and mana to throughout the day each week each month what I consider to be important, the, you know, which battles you choose to fight or just let go, right? So I, yeah, it's, it, it's been an interesting first episode, at least for me, ranting and everything. And, you know, hey, I, I feel like once we get the ball rolling, you know, we'll have uh, interviews and future guests, so that'll be exciting. You know, initially, most likely, the future guests will just be friends of mine. You know, chilling, you know, regaling stories and just talking, having a time. Maybe in the future, hopefully in the future, putting that energy out there into the universe. Maybe we'll have some famous people. Who knows? Maybe we'll have some collaborations with fellow content creators with fellow media personalities with fellow entertainers we shall see um but yeah i i'm going to be honest and say something tells me that the episode length of this podcast will most likely be ridiculously inconsistent. <laughs> some might be 20 minutes, some might be an hour, some might be an hour 30. We really don't know at this point. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see how we go, shall we? <sighs> All right, I, I, whew, I think I'll wrap up the first episode. <clears throat> 
put my spiel hat on. I'll wrap up the first episode by letting everyone know if they'd like to submit a question or idea for the podcast. Um, feel free to join our Discord server where there's a specific text channel specifically for podcast questions and ideas. Or if you're listening slash watching on YouTube, leave a comment there. Um, I will put the Discord link like it always is in the majority of my videos. Um in the description box if you're watching on YouTube, Um, or you can hit up our official podcast page at anchor.fm forward slash Perlin Ray and send through your message there. If you choose to send in or submit a voice message, I might just play that on the episode. You know, you answering your question or your idea or just your commentary, right? Your two cents. Um, instead of me reading out the message, you know, so if you possibly want your voice on the podcast, let me know. If you're chucking a funny, you know, why not? So anyway, wrapping up, don't forget to follow, like, subscribe, feed the algorithm gods, because they hungry. All right, all that jazz on the appropriate platforms. I'm Pearl and Ray telling you, don't forget to drink your water, get enough sleep, eat dessert, look after yourself, and... I'll fill your ears next time on the next episode. Bye!